they're politicians. Like, yeah. And they're, they're Italian. They basically said, somebody bothers you, we yeah. have people that take care of that. <laughs> they're politicians. Go back home. <laughs> <Yep>. Politicians. <laughs> Go back home, you let us know what happens. Yeah. But, but spread the word that he's got a buddy out in the boat in Gloucester. He's got a big 100-foot fucking fishing boat. He's talking about chumming people. Good evening. My name is John Jeskolk, and I'm the chief of police of the Manchester Police Department, which is the large city just south. David Bailey. 
My name is David Bell. <coughs> Larry Emerton. <coughs> Good afternoon and welcome to Golf Town. My name is Representative Larry Emerton. I have uh, three different perspectives that maybe you do or do not see from other people. Uh, one is I'm a state representative, have been for 18 years. Secondly, I'm a bail commissioner in this town for over 12 years. Kelly, I'm not even going to try the last name. Um, I certainly felt it was important enough despite the comments you're getting on your table, to uh, come here and talk about the Gothtown Police Department because uh, they have an excellent police department. Richard Glendon. That's close enough. <laughs> My name is Richard Gendron, and I am the uh, Chief of Police for the uh, Town of Hudson. So I've had the privilege of working with the Gothtown Police Department uh, that entire oh. time. I've also had the privilege of working having here in front of me numerous other police departments sitting in other courts and uh, would strongly urge you to re-accredit them uh, if you see so fit. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Thank you. Judge Mike Ryan. Um, I just want to reinforce what uh, Judge Lawrence had to say. I've only been the, the uh, special judge in this court for six years, but I've left, I lived in Gosstown for 49 of my 53 years. Um, I was an attorney in town, still am, but I, I did a lot of defense work before becoming a um, judge in this town, so I dealt with um, Chief French, I dealt with Kerry Stekowicz. Um. Hey, I'm John Lalash, I'm the uh, troop commander of Troop B in Milford, and the state police. We uh, oversee, we cover all of Hillsborough County and the turnpike system from I-93 from Salem, <coughs> Texas, and we have a turnpike. Barbara Griffin. <coughs> Welcome to our community. My name is Barbara Griffin. Um, I first learned that you could even become an accredited police station as a member of the budget committee here in town. Thank you. My name is Philip Devanza. I'm on the board of selectmen. Uh, Nick Camposano. Good evening. My name is Nick Camposano and I'm a member of the board of selectmen. I'm also a district chief with the city of Manchester. Lou Alexander. No, for the record, my name is Lou D'Alessandro. I'm state senator representing District 20 <laughs> and the Manchester Wards 3, 4, 10, 11 in the town of Goffstown. Someone who I'm actually familiar with, Stephen Monier. Good evening. My name is Steve Monier. I'm the United States Marshal for the District of New Hampshire. Gail Thomas. Good evening and welcome to Goffstown. My name is Gail Thomas and it's my pleasure to speak and support accreditation for the Gosstown Police Department. A Gosstown Police volunteer, I participated in many communities. Christopher Connolly. My name is Christopher Connolly. I'm the executive officer with the neighboring community of uh, Dunbarton. I should probably bring a bit of a unique perspective uh, to the panel this evening. <coughs> Up until 2003, I actually worked for the Gosstown Police Department. I was a patrol sergeant. Kevin. Dina Poli. I am a uh, sergeant with the Hudson New Hampshire Police Department. Um, good evening. My name is Marguerite Wagling. I'm the Hillsborough County Attorney. Uh, in other words, I'm the DA for the uh, the area that encompasses Gosstown. Uh, I'm in Gerard. Yes. That's what else? That right. Boulogne. Uh, my name is Gerard Boulogne, and uh, uh, my story is a little bit different than uh, what you've been hearing here tonight. Um, I don't think the big turnout is a coincidence. They knew I was coming, and they're trying to paint the prettiest picture they can of the town of Gosstown Police Department. Um, I handed you a CD with the court uh, records on court case um, number 1305. It's a criminal case. It's involving me. And uh, in there, you'll see recordings that I made of a personal messenger, an agent, for Prosecutor Stekowicz and other members of the Gosstown PD. Now, I'm not painting everybody, but Chief French is mentioned. And in that, those recordings, uh, his personal messenger threatens to kill me if I don't shut up about the millions stolen from the Gosstown High School construction project, a construction project which I was uh, closely involved. 
Uh, over the years, I've been filing complaints in the Hampshire Supreme Court Attorney Discipline Office. I've won. I've basically in nine times uh, that I've been before courts or hearings, I've yet to lose. So when they couldn't beat me in the courts, they threatened to kill me. And then when I recorded them threatening to kill me, uh, Attorney Wageling, who was sitting here before you, filed charges against me for making illegal recordings. Uh, they indicted me with multiple felonies where if I was convicted, I would spend the rest of my life in jail. I fought the charges. They were recently dropped because they, uh, when they realized that these recordings could be played in court as evidence, they dropped all the charges. So I was facing multiple felonies with life imprisonment and they've dropped the charges down to a misdemeanor with a hundred dollar fine. And I'm going to fight that. The reason why they dropped the charges is because the prosecutor, at the direction of uh, Margaret Wageling, uh, he, not at the direction, against her direct orders, refused to prosecute after I sat down with him. What he told me was, I want to keep my job. That's how strong our case is. And you'll see all the evidence in there. What it amounts to is I've been working with the State of New Jersey Commission investigation, the driving force behind the State of New Jersey Commission investigation. They mounted a four-year study, and it came out in 2000 and 2004. That was an eight-year study. Their specific task, the State of New Jersey Commission investigation, is investigating organized crime and racketeering as it pertains to law enforcement. And the patterns and practices that I've discovered and outlined in detail to them, uh, they have letters, you'll see that in the CD, affidavits, saying that uh, the patterns and practices that I have are identical or similar or identical to what they've proven to be true in New Jersey. Organized crime is here in southern New Hampshire. And the pretty picture that you painted here tonight, it's not true. And I'm not alone. There are others out there who are afraid. I'm the only one who had the stones to stand up to these criminals masquerading as law enforcement officers. I'd endured three years of death threats, hang-up calls, so many, so numerous, that our bedtime routine at home consisted of disconnecting the phones at night because the phones kept ringing off the hook. Anonymous death threats, numerous. Personal death threats on the phone by this messenger for Kerry Stekowicz. When I went to the meeting, I brought a tape recorder and a firearm. I used the tape recorder. And now it's all coming to a head. And I have another recording, which I'm going to disclose here tonight. Nobody knows about it, except for the, the New Hampshire Attorney General's office. And in that recording, the personal messenger for Chief French and Stekowitz says that Chief French is the one who set the arson fire next to my building in order to intimidate me into silence. That's what the recordings say. And uh, on those tapes, he says, if I don't shut up, he's going to kill me. or going to the Gosstown Police Department. And he's very specific about that. Goes into detail about that. Goes into detail as to how they're going to kill me. And you'll hear that on the tapes. And uh, in order to drive the point home, uh, he brings out the dead body of Dr. Craig Heber, who was working with me to expose this. He was the Gosstown School Board Chairman. At the time that we were going to go to law enforcement to expose the theft of the millions in New Hampshire education funding money for the construction project, he drops dead unexpectedly and mysteriously. And nobody knows where he died of, and that's part of the court records. The judge on the case was the same judge in my case. The judge has accredited the, these recordings as being real. The death threats are real. That's all in the court case and the court records. And uh, no one has ever been able to determine what Dr. Keeper has died of. And he died precisely at the time that we were going to come forward with law enforcement. He was working with me. And the guy who took his place is Gosstown Police Captain Kerry Stekowicz as school board chairman. After he took over as school board chairman, all the files that I was sharing with Dr. Heber disappeared. And that's why it's taken so long for me to rebuild my files, and uh, that's where we're at today. And uh, while all the smoke and mirrors you're hearing it tonight, it's all, it's all pablum. What you see on that CD is all facts, documented facts, 
page after page, letters from the Board of New Hampshire of Architects, uh, dozens of letters supporting my position, even one from Margaret Wageling before she realized that I was uh, two steps ahead of her. So uh, that's what I had to say, and I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad to be able to sit here and get this out. And that's why you're seeing all the, the people before you here. They're parading themselves one after another because they knew I was coming. And uh, that's all I have to say. Thanks. Okay, thank you for your comments. All right.